So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little chat, a little occult chat. Um, give me one second. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, I was um watching something that I've I've been watching um on and off for years. And I always rewatch it because I always learn something new as it pertains to the occult and you know esoteric knowledge and just the symbolism and how it has played out into our current and more present existence here in this world today, especially for black people and even Mexicans and Hispanics as well. And what I'm referring to, and white people too, everyone. And what I'm referring to is the Guyana tragedy, the massacre, the, the mass suicide that took place um, at the hands of Jim Jones in 1978 in the jungle of Guyana, South America. And the version of, you know, they, they made a movie about this back in 1980. The Guyana tragedy actually took place in 1978, but they made a movie about it in 1980 in Powers Booth. He played Jim Jones. That's the version that I like. There were, I think there was another version that came out, but I didn't really care for that particular um, version. And word on the curb is Leonardo DiCaprio is getting ready to play Jim Jones again. So it's interesting, and I did not know that. So it's interesting that I'm becoming interested again in Jim Jones. And see, the reason I'm interested in Jim Jones, the cult leader, it's not because I, I admire him or anything like that, so don't get it twisted. It's just that I was always, as a teenager, I was drawn to stories like that. You know, cults and how did people, and there is a difference between the, uh, the let me say this, there is a difference between the, the occult and a cult. A cult is when you follow a person and their ideologies by any means necessary. And you, you have total devotion to this person, okay? A group of people following a person and their ideologies, total devotion by any means necessary. The occult is hidden knowledge. The occult is hidden wisdom. The occult is information that has been hidden from you, but it's in plain sight. So I wanted just I wanted to just make that distinct difference between the two, so people won't get them mix, mixed up. When I was around when I was around fifteen, when I learned of Jim Jones and the Guyana tragedy, that was because at that time in the world, for a lot of you younger people who don't know who weren't born yet, around that time in the world there was a there was another cult, and that was the David Koresh cult. In Waco, Texas, and what's interesting is that the is that the government went into Waco and they bombed that compound or something. They they attacked the David Carish compound, and that is what really got me more interested in other cults, and it led me to Jim Jones. But see, here's the thing: I didn't know it then. But I was actually getting channels and I was being led by Jones's spirit to check certain things out. And it's so interesting that now that they're they're doing another movie where Leonardo DiCaprio is allegedly supposed to be playing Jim Jones in another bio, biographical picture. And I actually want to see that because there are many different layers to this man that we know as Jim Jones. And I know a lot of people may not agree with what I'm saying. Don't give a fuck. 
but I'm going to say it. And I'm not saying it definitely. I'm not putting a stamp on it, but I want to know something. Was Jim Jones just as much a victim as the people that he victimized? Because I've talked about this before, but I was watching the Guyana tragedy last night because again, there's something that I, I, you know, I always learn something new when I watch that movie. There's something that always sticks out that I didn't catch before. And one thing that I really caught on to watching it this go round was the connection between the Jonestown experiment, I'm going to call it an experiment like I did before. One thing that really stuck out was how what, what's happening in, what happened in Jonestown and how Jim Jones rose up in power, not just in his, not just in his church, but in the country at that time. He was one of the leading clergymen in the country at that time. And not only that, he had also obtained a position by the mayor in, I want to say Indiana, maybe Indiana. I think it was Indiana. I'm not certain, but I think it was Indiana. He had um, obtained a position in the government as the human rights commissioner or something like that the Commissioner on Human Rights or something, something along those lines, okay? He had obtained that title. He was given that title by the mayor of whatever city he was in in Indiana back in the 1960s. So there was definitely government, in, there was definitely governmental or government agencies intertwined with Jim Jones and the People's Temple. But what I found to be very, very um, similar in nature was how Jonestown, that experiment, I'm going to call it an experiment. Jonestown and that entire experiment, it really paved the way for how people act now and the mindset that people have now in the United States of America. This is what I'm talking about. Here's where I'm going with it. And it ties into this black, you know, so-called fake ass motherfucking conscious community too. We are living up under the Jim Jones legacy. We are living up under the Jim Jones legacy. You do as I say, don't do as I do, you do as I say, you take whatever medicines I tell you to take, you believe whatever I tell you to believe. And the moment that you disobey me, the moment that you go outside of the curriculum, or the moment that you go outside of the systemic way that I want you to present yourself, the moment that you do that, they're going to gaslight you. They're going to dismiss you. They're going to treat you like you never existed. They're going to um, totally, totally remove you from anything that you were connected to. Same thing with a lot of other cults. We're living up under the Jim Jones effect and probably other cult leaders as well. But I noticed because Jim Jones was a major, major cult leader of the 20th century. I can see the effects of the things he did back then. I see how 
let's just say the government used Jonestown as an experiment to lay the groundwork for everything that we're going through now. You better take this because if you don't take this and y'all know what I'm talking about, if you don't take this inside of your body, you will be locked out of everything. Look at the separation of families. Look at the separation of friends because of the current events that's taking place now. Now, in actuality, I'm talking about because of COVID. But in actuality, long before COVID, these types of things were being implemented anyway. And they were being implemented in increments. They started with um, smart technology, smartphones. Then they, well, they started actually with, you know, places like MySpace, Facebook, all of these different social engineering sites that keep you separated, that keep you divided. You would rather be on Facebook talking to people versus talking to people face to face. You would rather video chat with people rather than bring your lazy ass around the corner to actually see the person. The separation of family, the separation of your spirit, the disintegration of your spirit, the reprobate of your motherfucking mind. See, people think that reprobate of mind is about doing a specific act or acts that may be considered sinful, but reprobate of mind is also the death of your spirit. You don't have to die physically for your spirit to die. And what Jim Jones did was he killed people's spirits. He killed people's spirits. much like they do in this so-called black conscious community. They'll pull you in, treat you good, but the moment that you do something that they don't approve of, like a cult, they'll throw you away. Because a lot of these so-called niggas, a lot of these so-called niggas who have been propped up and promoted as these gods and all this other bullshit, they are up under the Jim Jones. Some people may call it effect. I want to call it legacy. They're up under the Jim Jones legacy. Because they're in this to make money. And they're in this for validation. Jim Jones abused people's spirit. He abused their spirit. He abused their minds. He abused their bodies. He betrayed them. And I see the very same things taking place in this so-called black conscious motherfucking community. I see the very, the very same things that, that I saw in that movie. And I didn't, I didn't recognize it at first. But the very same things that I saw in that movie, I see right in that so-called fake ass motherfucking black conscious community. It's about them having followers. Even the ones that claim they don't want that. Yes, you do. You want it. You want it because you wouldn't have anything else if you didn't have followers. You wouldn't want any, you wouldn't have anything else because these people, and I'm talking about people that have a cult like mentality who want to be a leader 
Even the ones that say that they don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because your actions say something totally different than what comes out of your mouth. Your actions are not aligned with your words. And that was the case with Jim Jones as well. For, um, you know, later on in his life. Now, when he first started his journey, I think that he had the right, I think that he had the right vision. You know, he, he wanted to help people. He was definitely interested in helping black people, you know, elevate to the next level. He even, adopt, he even adopted black children. So what really fucking happened to him? Yes, Jim Jones has black children. A lot of people don't know that. Not biological, but adopted. As a matter of fact, his black adopted son did an interview <clears throat> on Oprah. He wasn't in Guyana at the time of the massacre or the mass suicide ritual. He was in Georgetown somewhere in, he was in Georgetown, Guyana. He was in the city. He wasn't at the uh, Jonestown uh, compound in 1978. He was at some basketball tournament when that happened. He did an interview with Oprah. You can um, Google it or you can uh, search for it here on YouTube. Jim Jones' son. Jim Jones' son. His black son. Adopted. But nevertheless, he adopted him. So what really happened to Jim Jones to make him into what he was? The breeding ground was already there. But what really pushed him over the edge, what really pushed him over the edge and made him into what we know him as now was when he went to the CIA, allegedly, or whatever. He went to the CIA and they trained him on how to put his flock completely up under his control. Now in the movie, The Guyana Tragedy, they didn't show him going to the CIA or the government. And who they put in the place of the CIA and the government was Father Divine. He was another um, notorious cult leader of that time in, in, in the 20th century. He was another, well, he was black though. He was a Negro. He was nigger. And in the movie, James Earl Jones played Father Divine. And he went to Father Divine. And Father Divine guided him and gave him advice on how to put his flock up under his control. But that was all, all symbolism for the government. And it was also showing you the power that the black man really has. That's what it was really showing you as well. The power that the black man really has. And on just on a side note, that movie came out in 1980. Those black men back in 1980 was fine as a motherfucker, but child, I was too young. I was one years old or whatever, but they was fine, child. They had afros, nice bodies, no tat, all not all them fucking tattoos. They wasn't wearing no tight pants, and they wasn't acting like no white men in black skin, honey. No shade to white men, but y'all know what I'm talking about because even some of y'all got a little bit more swagger to you nowadays. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They weren't acting in that off rhythmic type of energy. You know what I'm saying? Just on a side note, them men was fine as a motherfucker back in the day. And it really goes to show you how Jim Jones, how he picked the right type of black men to work for him and to be his servants and disciples. He knew how to put those men up under his control. Same with the white men. He knew to pick the strongest and the fittest of them as well. Same thing with the Latino men. Because, you know, quiet as is kept, there were a lot of black people in Jonestown, but there were a lot of white people. There were a lot of Latino people that died in Jonestown as well. And that legacy 
has shaped the world, let alone the United States. That legacy has shaped the world. And that is why we are so divided now. That is why our consciousness is so divided. That is why our consciousness is in conflict with itself. Because we're still up under that type of motherfucking energy. Because I'm going to tell you, and anybody that's that was born before that era, around the late 70s, early 80s, that is when things started to really, and I'm talking about in terms of black people and white people too, in a sense. Prior to that, they had the hippie movement with, where allegedly that was an experiment as well. Allegedly, some people say they had the hippie movement that came to an end around that time where they were talking about love and raising your really it was about raising your heart chakra and awakening, you know, your higher self, as some people would call it. That's what that movement was all about. But then. That came to an end, late 70s, early 80s, right? And that was right around the time that the Jonestown experiment abruptly ended due to the mass suicide that, um, that followed. So when you really examine the timeline and the events, and when you really look at what really happened, you can see what contributed to the downfall of the minds of black people and people in general in this society. Because allegedly they were doing experiments with um, psychedelics and stuff like that to see the effect that it had on people's minds, allegedly. And when they gave it to certain white people, they noticed that there was a change in their DNA and how they thought. Your mind and your DNA are the same thing, technically. Um, but that's another story. People ain't ready for that. But your mind and your DNA are the same thing. And when they saw how that changed white people's DNA and how that made them more grounded, I'm not going to say it turned them into black people, but it made them more grounded. You know, they didn't want to kill and lynch and burn uh, black people anymore. That was in the 70s. There was a period in the 70s where they had that whole peace love thing. The, 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 ra the raising of the vibration and the frequency of the heart chakra, as people would call it. And the ray in the heart and the mind are the same thing too. Raising the vibration of the, of the mind. This was the movement of the 1970s behind the scenes because at that time, the world was up under a different type of frequency. Let's just say that. But once they realized that this was unifying people and bringing people together, blacks and whites, they had to find a way to stop it. Same thing in Jonestown. See, let's back up. Let, let, let's back up. When I said earlier, because I don't want people to take it the wrong way, when I said earlier was Jim Jones just as much a victim, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, um, to uh, what's the word, to idolize him or to, you know, take away from the heinous crime that he committed. He was a crazy, psychotic miserable motherfucker, much like a lot of these black men that are so-called spiritual leaders in the fucking conscious community. Yeah, similar. A lot of them, whether they know it or not, they pull from that Jim Jones doctrine. They don't do it in the radical way in which he did it, but they do it because they're looking for followers. If you are a follower, you are in a cult. So what they did was, instead of, what, what, cults have morphed into followers. Cults have morphed into followers. Modern day cults are followers. 
following one person. That's all that it is. And these niggas, they know how to get certain people up under their motherfucking control. They know how to do that. If I wanted to, I could do it too. I could. But that doesn't motivate me. I don't believe in people following me and following my every word. I want people to challenge me. I want people to question me. I want people to challenge what I say. The people that people that I that I'm cool with. If I don't fuck with you, then no, you can't challenge a motherfucking thing. That's just that. I'm talking about people that I'm cool with. I want them to pull me and say, hey, a cult view or Bagugavat. Let me ask you a question. I got a little brother, play little brother in the UK. He's always questioning me. And I forgot how I got off on this tangent. But I'm just connecting the dots because I see a lot of, I see a lot of Jim Jones's spirit. I see that spirit in a lot of these so-called black conscious leaders in this black fucked up ass community that we're that 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 everybody is in. Not me. I ain't a part of that bullshit. I ain't in no groups. I ain't no fucking follower. Never was. You admire people. You may like people, but I ain't never been no motherfucking follower. Never. Never. Okay? Never. Because even if I admire a person, I always keep a side eye on them because I know, especially with black men in this magical occult community, I know they'll turn on you. They can't be trusted. They cannot be trusted. And I see a lot of that. I, I see a lot of the Jim Jones legacy in a lot of these Negroes. I see it. But I was getting ready to go off on a whole nother topic. But um, I don't know what I was getting ready to say. I forgot. Who the fuck is this texting me? Give me a second. Let me see. Oh, that's my... um. Oh, that's my, um, that's my dude texting me, my boyfriend. Anyway, so I'm just connecting the dots and I'm looking at how I'm looking at the similarities and the um, synchronicities that are all aligned with what took place in Jonestown. Even with the mandates that are going on now. Even with the current mandates that are going on now, we are up under the Jim Jones legacy. I'm not going to say effect. I'm going to put it in another way. We're up under the Jim Jones legacy. My ear itch. Ugh. We're up under the Jim Jones legacy. And you see it in every facet of life. So this is what I wanted to, in, in our culture, do as I do, follow what I say, follow me, follow me. See, Jim Jones laid that experiment in Jonestown, laid the groundwork. It laid the groundwork for everything that you see happening now. Even this so-called black conscious shit. It laid the groundwork for even that because truthfully, black consciousness on YouTube is not real black consciousness. It's not. It's a fake facade for a bunch of fucking loser ass motherfucking niggas to make money off of weak minded people. And I have to admit that I got caught up in that motherfucking shit too. But the difference between myself and other, 
The difference between myself and others is that even though I got caught up in it, because of the negative experience that I had and the betrayal that I experienced within that circle, I got something out of it. I got more out of it than not. I used it to my advantage to learn. I used it to my advantage to expand my consciousness. You see what I'm saying? Truth be told, you don't need to go to nobody for no motherfucker, for, for, for nothing. You don't need to go to nobody for nothing. Everything that you need is already inside of you. So I'm glad that I learned that from wherever. But to, but to have a personal connection with anything that has to do with that community, no. That is severed. Because on another note, the conscious community, the black conscious community is very hypocritical. Because they don't have an issue with men pretending to be straight. They don't have an issue with men pretending to be heterosexual while they take dildos up their ass. They don't have a problem with that. But they have a problem with a person that lives in their truth who just says, I'm openly gay. But they don't have an issue with a motherfucker who says he's a heterosexual bottom. They don't have a problem with that. But they got an issue with a person who's openly gay. But they don't have an issue with men who live in deception and confusion and confliction, they don't have an issue with that. They embrace confusion, deception, and confliction. That's the type of shit that them niggas embrace. And that's why the black conscious community is so fucked up. They embrace that. They embrace men uh, being deceptive towards women, telling them that they're heterosexual, but in fact, they want to take dicks and dildos up their ass and walk around saying, I'm straight. But the conscious community don't have a problem with that. They're cool with that. That's normal to them. But a person that says that they're gay, they got an issue with that. They degrade people who live in their truth. It took a lot of courage for me back then to go up on a platform with ultra heterosexual men and speak my fucking truth. That took a lot of courage and strength to do that versus somebody who creates drama amongst people, who goes on somebody's platform with deception and lies. It took, a, what I did was, that was a revolutionary motherfucking act. And even they said it in so many words. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody. You can remove videos, you can remove this, but you will not take that the fuck away from me because that took a lot of fucking courage because truth be told, I don't like public speaking like that. Not even doing this, but I got some shit I need to just, to just say. This, see, this is the Jim Jones legacy. This is all connected to the Jim Jones legacy. When people did not do or say or stay in a certain alignment with what he felt was right. He would gaslight them. He would mistreat them. He would even kill them. 
And all of this shit that I'm, that I'm saying, the conscious community has been accused of. So they don't have a problem with you living in deception because you know Jim Jones himself allegedly was bisexual, having affairs with men and women. Isn't that what they do in the black conscious community too? On the low low? But then they want to criticize somebody that's gay. They want to criticize people that are gay. They want to clown people that are black gay. They don't do that to gay white people, but they want to do that to other black gay people. This is what these motherfuckers do. But see, the good thing about me is that I'm not a fucking victim. And the experience that I had in the conscious community, the little bit of, it, of, of the experience that I did have, what I did learn was that this is what I came down here to learn about. I came down here to learn about betrayal, dysfunction, deception, lies, illusions, and being around cowardly ass men who claim that they are men, but they're cowards. They're cowards and they are afraid of the truth. So that you could never fucking take from me. Nobody could never take that from me. I don't give a fuck who you are. There is nobody in my mind, there is nobody more powerful than I am in my mind. And that's how you have to be in this motherfucking shit. You got to have a strong fucking mind. But to initiate and to dismiss someone simply because you have a disagreement with them. That's a cult mentality. Somebody doesn't do something you don't like. You dismiss them. That's a cult mentality. And that's the same thing that Jim Jones did to a lot of his followers. When people wanted to step away from that shit, when people wanted to back away from that cult-like bullshit, he would either kill them, gaslight them, or make their lives miserable. And the conscious community, and I don't give a fuck who gets offended by it, has been accused of doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. That you will not take away from me. And I'm combining all of these things and talking about them because it's all connected to that nightmarish legacy of Jim Jones. Jim Jones laid the groundwork for these current day mandates that we have now. He even prophesied that some of this shit, as crazy as he was and as psychotic as he was, he even prophesied over 40 years ago, decades ago, everything that we're seeing now, but he did it symbolically. He used the context of a nuclear war or at least that's how it came to him, but he didn't know how to decode it. See, I know how to decode that. It wasn't a literal nuclear war. His mind was, you know, his mind was stuck on that, but it wasn't a literal nuclear war. He was talking about a mass psychological war, which is what we have now. It was a mass psychological, it was mass psychological warfare. And the conscious community does it to people. 
the government does it to people because the conscious community is tied to the fucking government. I was watching a video. <clears throat> I can't remember the brother's name. But he was talking about, he had a guest on his show, on his podcast, on his YouTube channel. He had a guest on his show and they were talking about how a lot of these conscious black men get approached in jail by agents, by government agents to be leaders of the so-called black conscious fucking community. to keep the wool over black people's eyes. But that's that works for them because I just told you they like deception. They like lies. They like that shit. They live in deception. We're not talking about living in, you know, illusions. We're talking about calculated deception. That is what these motherfuckers live on. Calculated deception. Anyone that has a foundation of truth, they don't want those people around them, such as myself. I don't want to be around them anyway because they're beneath me. That shit is beneath me. But I realized that this is the work that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to go through this betrayal I was supposed to go through the things I went through so I could learn from it, so I could grow from it, and so I could expand my consciousness. And so I could understand my own, my own bullshit within myself. So I could heal that wounded childhood within me. So I really have to thank certain individuals in that conscious community because they were the best teacher for me. Because they taught me about betrayal. They taught me about what, when people hurt you and abuse and misuse your energy. They taught me about that. The conscious community is a great teacher when it comes to teaching you, the black conscious community. They are very good teachers in teaching you about um a, a, a betrayal and hurt and gaining strength because if there's no pain there's no gain you find your gain through your pain and ever since I went through that bullshit that I went through a year ago so many wonderful things have happened to me out of that because I begin to pull back the layers of myself and look at my own neuroses and my own, you know, uh, issues with myself. I begin to pull back the layers and see, well, wait a minute, Sia Grant, which, which is what I was calling myself back then, but I don't call myself that anymore. I'm the occult view, a.k.a. Bagugavad, the dark seer. I said, wait a minute. What is it that's creating this that's within you? What are you hiding? What do you need to change within yourself? So I had to peel back the layers to even understand myself even better. So I could move forward because I got my shit with me too. But I'm not going to bullshit people. I'm not going to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. I don't need books for knowledge. It's already inside of me. Knowledge and wisdom and information comes to me like that. Like that, under the right circumstances. When I'm around people that ain't that, that, that are not for me, then that spirit ain't going. It ain't, it ain't going. It's not going to work. I was sitting in meditation the other day, 
because something, you know, took place to kind of rub me the wrong way. And my spirit said, this is what you were built for. This is this. This was the lessons that you were built for betrayal, learning about it and teaching other people about betrayal and how people betray you and misuse your energy, even with a smile on their face. And it's not always a white person. Most of the time for me, it's been another black person, whether it be a black man or a black woman, but mainly other black men, mainly other black men, mainly. But it's always nevertheless been another black person. The conscious community, the black conscious community cannot give you wisdom because it's mainly ran by broken black men. They can give you knowledge, but they can't give you wisdom. You have to get the wisdom from the woman, the black woman. And because, because of that, that is why the black conscious community is so fucked up. That is why there is no order in the black conscious community. I'm, ta I'm not talking about the, and let me be clear, I'm not even talking, I'm talking about the so-called spiritual black conscious community. I'm not talking about the conscious community, although that side is fucked up too. <clears throat> I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the spiritual black conscious community that gives accolades to white people simply because they come to them. when they've sat up and dogged white people all throughout their motherfucking career, conscious career, but now white people have a lot of courage when they come to them. They have a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. But here I sat on a platform with a bunch of ultra heterosexual men and nobody is going to take that away from me. I sat on a platform in drag, dressed up as a woman. In front of these ultra heterosexual men. That takes a lot of courage. So for a person to think that they can take that away from you, you got me fucked up. You can't take that away from me you can take the video down but you can't take away my motherfucking dignity and that's what you did that's what you tried to do when you allowed a person to come on your platform and Jedi mind trick you into talking about me but then you turn on me and you back up cowardly Bitch ass deceptive shit. Tell me that's not the Jim Jones effect. Because that's the kind of cowardly bitch ass shit that Jim Jones did. He would send people to harm other people. He would sit back in Guyana and go after former followers who didn't meet his criteria. Or he would send people out to bully followers if they didn't give him money. Now you got everybody putting up motherfucking cash apps. How the mighty have fallen. How the motherfucking mighty have fallen. And the same people that you betrayed are going to be the same people that you know the same. I ain't got to I don't have to complete it. You'll know. You'll you'll know. There was a scene in the Guyana tragedy where cowardly Jim Jones sent out followers 
to be these like avenging angels. And they were bullying this older black woman into giving the church more money. They were bullying this older black woman into giving up the only property that she owned. They bullied this woman into that. If that were my mother, none of them motherfuckers would have breathed life anymore. They wouldn't have. I would have took care of them if that were my mother or grandmother. But they were literally bullying this woman into giving up her property. But the only difference now is you're not being bullied to give up physical property. You're being bullied. Switching gears a little bit. You're being bullied to obey mandates that violate your body. You're being bullied to oblige and to obey mandates that violate your body. We're up under the Jim Jones legacy. Deception, bullying, lies, cult leaders pretending that they're not, following people. We're up under the Jim Jones effect. And especially black people. It's just that we're not in a forest or a jungle in Guyana. Jim Jones laid the groundwork. For followers. He was one of the founding people to lay the groundwork for followers. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. That's what the whole Jonestown experiment was about. Creating followers and not following your own ideology, but following the ideology of somebody else. And we were stupid enough to fall for it. I fell for it for a little while. Because when you get personal with people and you think people are cool with you, not friends, because I don't, I don't, I don't really trust no no niggas like that. So not no friends. But just, you know, cordial when you think people are cool with you, and then they turn on you and then dismiss you. Even when you paid them for a fucking consultation, and they didn't even have the decency to respond to you about it. Yeah. To the point where you just told them, keep the motherfucking money. Plus, I made that money back a thousand times by now. Keep that motherfucking money. Because they'll need it more than I will. That's the Jim Jones effect. I don't give a fuck about you. I'm not saying that. This is the mentality of these people in this black conscious community. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about your feelings, your money. I don't give a fuck about you. The only thing I give a fuck about is your money. I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, I'll pretend, I'll give you something. I'll pretend that I that that you're cool with me. I'll pretend. But then when there's a disagreement or misunderstanding, my true colors are going to come out. We've been tricked and bamboozled by a lot of these lying ass niggas. Who appear to be invested in trying to get you what you need spiritually. Or get you where you need to be spiritually.
imagination is everything, right? That's what they say. But that's what Jim Jones did too, remember? Remember, for those who've seen the movie, when he's, again, going back to when he first started out, he started out with a good plan. He had a good vision. He wanted to help people, specifically black people. He had food programs. He had job training programs. He had uh, programs for the elderly. He was doing a lot of good shit. I'm not going to say money corrupted him. You know what corrupted him? What corrupted him was the vision that he, no, what corrupted him was the fact of this, this fact. What came out of his mouth was not aligning with his behavior and his emotions. So it caused a reprobate of mind. It was already in him. But what made it come out even more was the fact that people admired him and really loved him because they thought he had good intentions. And that's the same thing with a lot of these niggas in the fucking conscious community. They don't have good intentions. They don't. It was me yesterday. It's going to be you today. But the difference between me and them is that I was made for this type of shit. I was made to deal with this type of shit so I can understand it, so I could decode it. And I can show you how weak these people really are. They don't have, there is no strength. There is no strength in intelligence with the absence of wisdom. And these black motherfucking men in the conscious community, they don't have no wisdom. And the women behind them don't have any wisdom because they've allowed their wisdom to die. Because they stay with toxic, weak, hurt men who are insecure about their own manhood because that was beaten out of them by their mothers. Not blaming women for, I'm not blaming women. Let me be clear. I'm not blaming women for anything. I'm talking about these individual men in this conscious community. You can tell that their mothers fucked them up. And they still walk in that. They are socially engineered to be just like Jim Jones. Because Jim Jones came from a dysfunctional family too. His father was a racist. His mother was a, um, she was not really a good mother to him from what I understand, from what I read about him. He came from a very abusive background. Very abusive. Very dysfunctional upbringing. He was borderline white trash. That is what he came from. His father was a white supremacist. He couldn't hold a job. His father was practically a bum. I think his mother was, she, I forgot what she was, but she wasn't all that great herself. Same thing with a lot of these conscious men. Same thing. So what they do is they use other people's weaknesses to get the things that they want. Because weak people recognize other weaknesses in other people. They saw my weaknesses in my, at that time, my, um, my need for male validation at that time. My need for male validation, not sex. Because I don't want to say nothing. Them ugly ass, some funny looking, detracting out motherfuckers. I, fuck no. Okay? Fuck no. I like men that look like my Christopher Barry. That's the type of men I like. Tall, handsome, golden skin, you know, royal type of motherfucking niggas. That's what I like. And I've spoken about him before, so you can't say nothing. 
Okay? You can't say nothing that 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 would embarrass me. Okay? Nothing. Yes, Christopher Berry was my lover, and I loved him very much. Yes, he was. That's the type of man I like. And if it had not been for his, you know, um, if it had not been for all of the things he was going through, he would have been a perfect fit for a man in the conscious community, no matter what his sexual orientation was, because he was openly bisexual. He was open about it and I knew it. He didn't walk in deception like a lot of these niggas in the conscious community. They walk in deception. They breathe deception. And I couldn't see it at that time. But one thing you will not take away from me is my motherfucking dignity. And one thing you will not take away from me is my motherfucking spirit and the work that I did. You can remove fucking videos. You can try to erase shit, but you won't take that away from me. You won't take that away from me. And the only reason I'm mentioning it is because it aligns with the Jim Jones legacy in effect. And how these niggas, they operate in that same manner. They operate in that same manner. No, they're not telling people to drink some poison-laced Kool-Aid or anything like that. They're not telling nobody to do anything like that. But they do have an, a, a, a psychotic ego complex. They do. See, this is real occultism right here. This is the real occultism that people don't like to really delve into. This is the real occultism. Being able to see the hidden bullshit. Being able to call out the hidden shit that don't nobody else want to talk about. This is what I call occultism. This is my artwork. I don't have to know or be a cookie cutter gay person. I'm me. I'm the, I'm the occult view. I'm Sia Grant, whatever you want to call me. I am me. And I thought, I thought that I had, I thought that there was a certain amount of respect in the conscious community when you were different, when you were not like everyone else. But in actuality, when you're a gay black person in the black occult, in the black occult spiritual conscious community, when you're an openly gay black person, they want you to be a stereotype. They really don't want you to have dignity because having dignity leaves them no room to clown you or to talk about you. Unless they want to talk about your physical body and Joan and do all that, which I don't give a fuck about none of that shit because them niggas in that fucking black conscious community, most of them are fucking physically unappealing, okay? Most of them are physically unappealing. There's nothing attractive about them. Nothing. Let's be motherfucking real. That's why I'm 42 years old and I still look like I'm in my early motherfucking 30s. Hello? Because spirit sustains me. And my spirit was sustained long before I came in contact with anybody in some motherfucking black occult conscious fucking bullshit ass fake fraudulent ass community you feel what I'm saying but to try to dismiss a person's work and to try to dismiss a person it really shows the hypocrisy and the Jim Jones effect in a lot of these motherfucking Negroes in this black occult conscious community 
It's not about removing a video. It's about you trying to take away that person's dignity. It's about you trying to make it seem like that person is a certain way when they're not. Because you niggas have a problem with openly gay people in the black conscious community. But you don't have a problem with niggas living on the motherfucking DL infecting black women with HIV. You ain't got a problem with that. I just had a full motherfucking STD panel Tuesday. Not that I needed it. I just got a fucking blood, blood test. You know, because every year I don't really like doctors and shit like that. <clears throat> but every year I do go and I get my blood work taken just to make sure that everything is functioning the way that it's supposed to. And if it's not, I'll try to fix it myself. You know, that's what a real spiritualist does. You know what I'm saying? And I just happened to tell them, I said, give me a STD panel, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, test me for all that shit. Not because I've been out there, but just because I wanted, I just wanted to have that on record because I'm in a relationship now and I want to have that on record. All of my shit came back negative. All of it. All of it. And I ain't been no motherfucking saint. Let me say that. I ain't been no motherfucking saint. But I ain't been no motherfucking stupid person either. I remember years ago on my old account, some motherfucker had the nerve to tell people that I hated black women because I'm gay. Then I've had motherfuckers say, oh, I hate women because I'm gay. But these very same men that said these things about me, they have the most tumultuous relationships with women. I think I like women more than they do. Especially if I ate a woman's pussy not that long ago. Honey, when I get horny, I get horny. If it's, a, if it's an adult that I want, an adult, and I like adults, you know, with, you know, them niggas in the conscious community, you know, they, they have a proclivity for unnatural other, you know, things. I don't. If I ate a woman's pussy, how the fuck do I hate women? Half of you motherfucking niggas that are heterosexual. You're in combative relationships with women all the fucking time. Even the ones you live with. But the nerve for someone to say that. But this is the same person that couldn't even hold on to his wife. This was somebody from years ago. But it's squashed now. But I'm just saying. This person said that I hated women because I'm gay. No, I'm gay because I like men. That's what makes me gay. I don't mess with women. Because I like men primarily. But every now and then I eat a little puss. Every now and then I will. I ain't gonna lie. I'll eat a little puss. I, I, I'll, I'll eat a little puss every now and then. And I openly admit it. That sure will. If I feel like it, I will. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm an adult. They're an adult. And I tell you one thing. When I ate a puss, she came. She came. No, not to make people grossed out, but she came. I had a threesome with her and... um. It was me, her, and another guy. I knew the guy. I didn't really know her. And she was a big girl too. And her and her and her and her pussy was fat and juicy. I don't like no skinny women in that way. No, I like if I'm gonna mess with somebody, if I'm gonna mess with a woman, she gotta be a big woman with big breasts and a fat, juicy motherfucking clit and pussy, child. Yeah, I'll eat a little puss every now and then. These motherfuckers really don't know me like that. And I probably can eat pussy better than most of you motherfucking straight niggas. Real motherfucking talk. But see, that woman knew I sucked, I sucked that guy's dick in front of her. But that's what she wanted to see anyway. I like shit like that. I'm a freak child. I like shit like that, honey. Like I said, I ain't no motherfucking saint, but I ain't no motherfucking fool. But these, but th that individual 
who made that statement that I hate women and all that bullshit, he would rather see black women involved with men who hide their sexual orientation. And that's how that conscious community is when it comes to gay people. They don't care if you're gay as long as you're lying about it and saying that you're a heterosexual bottom. That's what they call being a dignified person. And then they wonder why they got motherfuckers showing up at their fucking house. They wonder why all this backwards ass shit be happening to them. It's not happening to me. It's happening to you. Then you wonder why shit is popping off the way that it is. You wonder why. Because you invite those energies into your motherfucking virtual existence, therefore it infects your motherfucking physical, physical existence. That's why. Let's keep it motherfucking 100. But you will never be able to take that away from me. I walked away from that motherfucking cult bullshit, cult mentality bullshit. I walked away from it. After that person showed me who they were, I walked away from it and I left that person alone. When I tried to apologize, they didn't even accept it. And in case y'all wondering who, I ain't gonna even tell you what I'm talking about. I ain't getting into that. I tried to even apologize for anything that I may have done that was offensive. I even sent this nigga a couple of cash apps to say no hard feelings. But you still carrying a fucking grudge because you let a bitch motherfucker come on your platform and do some cowardly shit and you backed it up you let him hide behind you to try to attack my consciousness. You let him hide behind you to do that. And then because I had an issue with it, I'm the one that you get upset with. That's okay. I don't care anything about that. But it just shows the type of shit and it shows the true colors of a lot of these niggas in the conscious community. They don't have any integrity or any dignity. They're all about Jerry Springer type of shit. When I came into the conscious community, truth be told, I, I really didn't want to talk about no homosexuality and being gay and all that because that really is not all to who I am. But because these so-called higher spiritual niggas in the conscious community, because they can't see past homosexuality, even though they say they can, because they can't see past that, because they can't see past that, and because they are so ignorant in their own mind about it, it lets you know that their heart is not light as a fucking feather. And let you know that. How can your heart be light as a feather? How can your heart be light as a feather? When you contradict everything that you say out of your mouth. Yeah, we all know that this shit is supposed to contradict. But not when you're dealing with other people's motherfucking spirit. Not when you're, called, when you're trying to cause harm to other people's spirit with your actions. Now, you didn't cause no harm to me. That was all an illusion in my mind. But I'm sure there are people that they have caused harm to. And everything that I'm saying in this motherfucking video, I would say it to that person's face. Directly. In their house on their lawn, any motherfucking way, and I don't care about the repercussions. But because they're so caught up on somebody being gay, just like when I did that fucking interview, you know, with over there last year, which has been removed now, which I don't give a fuck about that either. But people had such a fucking problem with that. But I was asked to be on, on, I was asked. 
I, I was asked, I asked one time, could I do another interview? And the answer was no. And that is what caused the issue because I asked that one question. And I said, okay, no problem. But they backed up a person who was sneaky coming in my inbox trying to come on to me. And because I rejected that bitch nigga, he goes on this platform and mentions my fucking name for no reason. Does a Jedi mind trick on somebody that I thought had more intelligence and more higher spirit intelligence rather to see what that person was trying to do. But instead you take that out on me. It's similar to what Jim Jones did to, how can, it, it was several things he did. Well, let me think of something that he did in that movie that kind of connects to what I'm saying. Let me see. Case in point, here we go. And LeVar Burton was in this movie too. It's similar to what Jim Jones did when LeVar Burton's character, Richard Jefferson, in the Guyana tragedy, he came, I don't know why he came to that motherfucking compound. He was free. He comes to the motherfucking Jonestown compound in Guyana with his new wife played by Irene Cara. And because he would not allow Jim Jones to take his wife without a fight, Jim Jones started lying on him and gaslighting, gaslighting people into believing that LeVar Burton was a homosexual. He lied and said LeVar Burton's character, character Richard Jefferson, was a homosexual. All because he spoke up about something. So he tried to lie on him and tried to tear down his character. Now that wasn't done to me in the same way, but it's similar in context. Somebody mentions my motherfucking name in some fuck nigga shit, and I'm supposed to sit back and just be okay with that. That's the mentality of the black occult conscious community. Oh, just let it go, it's okay. No, it's not okay. When somebody tries to cause confusion and division and deception, and put my fucking name in it. That's not okay. That's not okay. And like I said, you can take things down, but you, can, you can't take my, my motherfucking dignity away from me. You can't take that away from me like yours was taken away from you. You can't take that away from me because I'm not up under the Jim Jones effect. I'm not. The black conscious community does not like gay black people. They will embrace gay white people before they will embrace um, gay black people. They do not. They try to use us and treat us like a freak show. And I feel as though that's how they tried to use me as some type of freak show. And then when they got what they wanted, they threw me away. And that's okay too, because I got a lot out of this. So I'm not mad about that. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm upset about is the fact that they're trying to take away my dignity with the dismissiveness of their attitude. That is what, that's what's upsetting me. You can sit up and you can give white people accolades, but you treat gay black people 
like subhuman people. You back up deceptive bullshit. But a person that walks in their fucking truth, you got a problem with them. A person that 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 they asked to speak. I thought you were in awe of me, which I don't care anything about that statement either. I don't I'm I'm not into getting the accolades and stuff like that. But I thought you were in awe of me. But I guess that was fake, too, right? You're only in awe of people. When they don't call you out on bullshit that you allow on your platform, right? And I'm so close to saying this person's name, but I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not going to give that person the, you know, I'm not going to give them that much. But I'm bringing it up, not out of hurt or frustration. Now, I was hurt a year ago. A year ago, I was very hurt. And even after that, I still showed support. But I didn't get a I didn't get a response, which is okay. I don't I because I didn't do it to get one. I didn't get a response or thank you or anything. But this person gives lives and they can go and thank a bunch of weirdos in their chat that they don't even know. And then they wonder why they got motherfuckers showing up at their fucking house. Let me say it again. But that's okay too. You can't take my dignity away from me. And you will not dismiss. You can dismiss me. But you can't dismiss my fucking consciousness. You can dismiss me, the human. But you can't dismiss my motherfucking consciousness and elevate some bitch motherfucker who was up in my inbox trying to come on to me years ago and because I rejected that funny looking ass motherfucker he's been salty ever since and he took an opportunity to come on their platform to mention my motherfucking name based off of that and used you as a shield to try to attack my motherfucking consciousness that's the real motherfucking T. And I still have the message from that weirdo up in my inbox trying to come on to me. But he yet he's he's heterosexual, right? But then you let this person come on your platform to try to make a joke out of me. Right? No, I don't stand for shit like that. This is the Jim Jones effect. His members were expendable. He had no regard for them. He lied to them. And that's what these niggas do in the black conscious community, the black occult conscious community. I'm not talking about the pan-Africanism community, although that's fucked up too. But again, I ain't talking about y'all right now. I'm talking about this shit right here. All of that shit, Jim Jones laid the groundwork for it. Because it's all about putting people up under a certain amount of control, gaining followers. Because I'm going to tell you something. When Bobby Hemet, when he was active in the community, in the conscious community, in the, in the spiritual black community, Bobby Hemet didn't have no fucking personal Facebook. Bobby Hemet wasn't looking for no motherfucking followers. Bobby Hemet wasn't doing no motherfucking uh, uh, interviews to make fun of people and to hurt people. Bobby Hemet didn't hurt people that really admired him that really had a profound respect for him. He didn't do stuff like that. And I can assume that that's one of the reasons why he stepped away from a lot of you motherfucking niggas 
Yeah, I fucking said it. And I'm not taking it back. In this moment, I'm speaking for Mr. Hemet. He may not have condoned homosexuality, but he didn't condemn gay people the way that y'all do. He may not have condoned it, but he didn't condemn it the way that y'all do, but then pretend that you cool with a person, but then you allow a fake phony motherfucker to come on your platform who is a undercover deceptive homosexual and you back up that cowardly bullshit energy that that motherfucker put out, which caused confusion between two people that never had no fucking issues. I'm a fucking man before anything else. I don't give a fuck if I put on a wig and a dress. I'm a fucking man. Okay. And I don't do bitch ass motherfucking shit. If I got a problem with another fucking man, I pick up the phone and try to call them like I tried to do this individual last year. But we're dealing with cowards in the black occult conscious community. And then you took my money for a consultation and you didn't even have the fucking decency, which is okay now. You didn't even have the fucking decency to say, see a grant, I'll give you back your money. Um, I can't, t I, I don't do these consultations anymore, but I'll give you back your money. No problem. But you afforded a bunch of fucking weirdos and you afforded them that, right? That's the Jim Jones effect, y'all. Take, take shit from people. Take stuff from people and don't give a fuck about them. I was homeless. I was homeless for a large part of last year, for about six months. And nobody even nobody even knew that I was going through any of that. But I didn't get on YouTube begging for no fucking cash apps or nothing like that because I didn't need them. Spirit sustained me. I, did, I, I was good. The only person that made sure that I was okay was my motherfucking man. He made sure I was okay. He came over to that motherfucking hotel to see me all the time. But I'm still standing motherfucking strong and can't no motherfucking body take that the fuck away from me. Nobody. This is not about friendship. It's about justice and it's about fucking dignity and integrity. And for you to mistreat somebody like that who didn't deserve it. Like I said, even after all that, I still sent cash apps to show support. But I didn't get no motherfucking thank you. I got ignored. The Jim Jones effect. Take and you shall not receive. Y'all, I've been talking for a minute and I just had to just, you know, put all of these puzzles together, put them all together so people can see the energy and the legacy that we're living up under. Jonestown was an experiment to implement what we see going on now in the future. That movie, The Network, that came out back in 1976 or 1977 that Faye Dunaway won an Academy Award for, that movie, The Network, that was a premonition or a vision of the future of which we're living in now. Follow me. Follow me. The Jim Jones effect. Follow me without, they took the religion out of it. They took the religion out of it. And now it's just follow me, follow me, follow me. I was hurt. 
I was hurt. And I can admit that my feelings were hurt because I thought that aspect of the conscious community at that time, I thought that they had a, had a certain amount of respect for me. You know what I'm saying? Even if they didn't agree with the homosexual stuff, I get that. But to try to treat me like a freak show when you treated me like family at one time. Because that's how I looked at this person. As I looked at them like family. And to mistreat me for a bitch ass nigga the way that you did. For a bitch ass nigga that came on your platform to bring division and dissension. For you to treat me in that way. That's what hurt. And for you to continue being cool with a person who did some bitch ass shit. And for you to dismiss me in the way that you did. Over one disagreement or miscommunication because I didn't mean any harm. I was hurt. Because I did care about the opinion of theirs. I did care about their opinion. Because I didn't want to be the type of gay guy, which I'm not. To be a stereotype. That's why I don't know what motherfucking gay guys are doing in no fucking club. Because I don't follow the cookie cutter standard of most gay men. I don't do that. And I thought that was something that the conscious community respected about me. But what I realize is they don't respect gay black people. They, res they, they embrace gay white homosexuals because a lot of them are attracted to them. See, black men only respect people that they want to sleep with. Sex is lower vibrating any motherfucking way, especially when you're doing it with one of those others. But that's another story. I thought that they had a respect for me. That's why I felt safe going on that platform. But I realized after everything was said and done to them, I was just a freak show. I was just a Jerry Springer moment. And now that they have no more use for me, they threw me away. And that is what hurt. Because it was based upon a bitch nigga. All of this was based upon some bitch nigga that came on a platform to create dissension and deception and confusion. And they allowed this person to use them to attack my consciousness, not knowing that this bitch motherfucker was up in my inbox years ago trying to come on to me. And I still have this picture that he sent me and I still have the messages he sent me. That is what hurt. And they continued a friendship with this person, but they cut me off for no fucking reason. Took my motherfucking money. Took my money. Took my money, didn't even say, I'm not going to say they stole it, nothing like that. But they took my money for a consultation and didn't even have the decency to say, you know what, I'm not doing this no more. Um, you know, it's all good. You know, I'm not doing no consultations no more, anything. Probably blocked me an email. That's fine. Over someone that you allowed to come on your platform to do a bullshit ass motherfucking interview about sex demons. And bring my name up in that bullshit. I have a right to respond to that. This is the Jim Jones effect. Because no, there, there is nothing sacred to none of these motherfucking niggas. There's nothing sacred to them. Not even the women that they're with. There's nothing sacred to them. The only thing is the only thing that is sacred to them is getting people's money and getting more followers and clout. And what makes this all the more insidious is because I really thought of this person as family. I thought of them as family, not family in the sense where I want something from them or, it, it, or, or putting, you know, obligations, nothing like that. 
But this person treated me so well in the beginning and had a profound respect for me that I had never gotten from heterosexual men. So I felt safe and comfortable with that person. Not trying to be no fucking friends. I don't need, this ain't about no friendship. This is about respect and justice and betrayal. And this person allowed a bitch motherfucking nigga to come to his platform and do some cowardly shit and he backed it up, continued to be friends with him and then threw me away. That's what hurt. Because I don't think I deserved that. The Jim Jones effect. People can take it how the fuck they want. They can like it. They can love it. They can suck it. They can duck it. I don't give a fuck. But I just had to get this off my motherfucking chest.